Uh, welcome to the town of Richmond Water and Sewer Commission meeting, June 3rd, 2024. Uh, are there any additions, deletions, or modifications to the agenda? Anyone online or here? No. Uh, all right, we'll move on to approval of the minutes, purchase orders, and warrants. First up are the minutes from May 2024. I have a motion to approve the minutes. <clears throat> it's barred, so move. This is Aaron, all second. Okay, discussion. Discussion. So, calling for a vote to approve the minutes from May 2024. Jay, aye. All right. Aaron, aye. Aaron, aye. Motion passes. Next up is purchase order. Yes, the minutes from the special meeting. Oh, you're right. I'm sorry. <laughs> Why did I miss that? I did. Uh, I apologize. So our annual meeting minutes, uh, to have a motion to approve the minutes from our annual meeting for May 21st, 24. Ms. Bart, so moved. Aaron, second. All right, discussion. No discussion, so calling for a vote to approve the minutes from May 2021, 24 annual <clears throat> meeting. Jay, aye. Bart, aye. Aaron, aye. <clears throat> Morgan, aye. Motion passes. Up is purchase order number. I don't think there's any purchase orders. No. I thought. Oh, would that is, there might be one included in the packet that was previously approved? Oh, maybe that I was. Think. Maybe you're right. Well, you would know. I think it was a purchase order. I, but I recall. Mm -hmm. I'm looking at what I emailed you guys now. I, I think say I turned them all in. I can't yeah, remember. Um, we have an invoice and then. A warrant and then like the that, list of warrants. Oh no, that's the warrant. It's part of the warrant. Yeah, that's just part of oh, it's just a warrant. warrant. I'm yeah, sorry, yeah, I yeah. apologize. Yeah, no. There are no purchase orders. Okay. So there's electronic. I apologize. Okay, no, so easy. Yeah. <laughs> it's, no, there's a lot of pieces. So no worries. Well, I think it was just a change of the format there threw me there. Okay. Uh do I have a motion to approve the electronic transfer warrant? <clears throat> for in the amount of thirty six thousand nine twenty three seventy, is Bart so moved? <clears throat> the second. Aaron, all second. All right. Discussion. <clears throat> Calling for a vote to approve electronic transfer warrant for twenty three thirty six nine two three and seventy cents. Jay, aye. Bart, aye. Aaron, aye. Oregon, aye. Motion passes, and then also a uh, warrant. Number two 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 four four in the amount of six thousand sixty dollars and twelve cents. We have a motion. Is Bard so moved? This is Aaron. I'll second. All right, Aaron Bard made a motion for the um, <clears throat> check warrant, and Aaron second. Uh, discussion? No discussion. Calling for a vote uh, <clears throat> for approving or not approving check warrant two 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 four four. Jay, Bard, I. Aaron, I. Oregon, I. Motion passes. I just noticed this, but Jim Feinstein's our treasurer. Yeah, yes, yes ma'am. Huh. He does a really good job, in my opinion. So it's not Connie that signs these. She's finance director. Yeah. So separation of powers. Oh. Jim is elected. Connie is an employee. Yeah. Okay, so like he looks at things and then they sort of balance each other. So up. Connie puts it all together. I review it. The commission approves it. Jim reviews it and signs it, and he actually is one that signs the checks. Oh, interesting. So, there, so there's yeah. a few different eyes on it, and it's not like one person can do it all. Yeah, it's all part right. of basic financial control. Yeah. yeah. Huh. I did not realize that. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. I just noticed it today. Yeah. Yeah, he's he's really... available for parties and <laughs> <Okay>. <laughs> he has a special suit. Mm -hmm. <laughs> all right. Right. I don't, um, it must be an inside joke. I miss that. So. No, I think just a, he's versatile. He's no, when he okay. shows up here, I don't know if he's here to be yelled at about the Richmond Land Trust or whether he's here as treasurer. <laughs> oh. Yeah. Like he's I got do. a good background with what Gardner Supply. I think yeah. he was the CFO there for, <clears throat> for like years. Right. So he really, I mean, he knows his stuff. Yeah. Yeah. He's good. Yeah. yeah his son, his son is the one that runs that trail run race. Bang. Yeah. So talented family in general. <laughs> <laughs> well, that's good. Glad they live here. Uh, okay, uh, next up, uh, review of consumer confidence report. Who should take this? So, I mean, it, go for it. Yeah, it's 
pretty straightforward. Um, it's an annual that, report, right? That we send out. Um, we did have one violation. Um, that violation was in um, March of last year. What <clears throat> happened was the state had come out and did a sanitary survey with the department. And when they did that, they had a list of things that they wanted corrected. <clears throat> um, one of the things was it, it, the water numbers were coming from the wastewater treatment plant and they wanted them to come from the water house, which we were already doing, but we weren't sending the numbers. We were sending the numbers that we got at the Wait treatment plant, mm -hmm. not at the water house. Right. They wanted that corrected immediately. And it was um, a mere <laughs> slip that it wasn't dated exactly. It was put off till the end of the month. Even though we had the correct numbers, they weren't recorded that way. Right. So it was it was corrected in March, not in February when they wanted it done. All right. yeah, so, so we, added, a, we added a note to the system here right. under where the violation is, which essentially summarizes what Steve said. And other than that, it's really a, a look at our year long numbers, yeah. um, lead, copper, I think fluoride, nitrate. Um, I believe all the numbers are, are within the acceptable ranges and this is a notice to our customers. Yep. I wanted to comment <clears throat> and ask about the fluoride because many people I think still to this day, watch the video of the meetings where we fought about the fluoride levels. Yep. And a lot of people have locked in their brains that 0.7 number. Now, if I recall from <clears> previous <throat> meetings, the state's lowered its guidance to 0.6. But the way this is phrased, it says zero to 0.6. And so it kind of, if I'm just an, a layman, I look at that and go, oh, well, we don't actually have to. And what happened to the 0.7? Do you know what I'm saying there? No, that range is what is detected the day that that is taken. Okay, so we, well, yeah, but- the, the It is still, the, the recommended state level is still 0. 0.7. It is, okay. So we, so what is, this is the date you collected at 5 one 2023 So that's Correct. just a snapshot. Correct. Okay. And that's basically what they take. So the zero though is what, it, where, where does the zero come from? It, they couldn't answer that because I had the same question. Okay. And I called them on the on the question and I could not get um and I can give you um his contact no no it's okay it's but just it is it is merely the range for that day <clears throat> since they don't have two samples taken that day there the range is zero to that right and so when we look at this I mean I have no argument with anything presented here it's just a note to the effect that these are one day samples and these are not indicative of the entire year. Yeah. Mm -hmm. My, I don't know that we've ever gotten complaints or confusion, but if I look at this, I might say one sentence to just clarify these are. Special. So the other thing that if you, that I had, uh, and the reason I originally called him on this, this is a, uh, a state form mm -hmm. that they make for each, you don't, we don't have to do this the way they do it, mm -hmm. but it's easy to do it their way. Okay. So if you look at the top of the heading, what does it say? Range. Yeah. Range. No, no. Detected contaminants. Uh, okay. Detected. And so, yes, it reads so, like. So, so my question was, it's a contaminant, but you're making us add it. <laughs> <laughs> right. I mean, that it's not explaining very well to the public. Um, I mean, it is a, it, it can be a contaminant. Um, in some towns, they have to remove fluoride. Um, the, and the chlorine is added because if we didn't, we would have bacteria. I mean, right. possibility of bacteria. So it is very dis misleading when it says detected contaminants at the top of the heading. It is. Yeah. Okay. okay. And then scrolling a little further down to the PFAS, yep. um, is the fact that we see... No, oh, you went no, too far. You went too far. Right okay. there. So yep. is this indicative, these lines, the 2022 and 2021, indicative that there was nothing detected? Yes. Okay. So 
basically, um, the way it had always worked in the past, you tested for PFAS every three years. Okay. That's now changing. That is becoming a yearly thing. <clears throat> um, and some, some places it, it could become a bi-yearly thing. They'll want to test in the winter and in the mm -hmm. summer months. But if you did not have a detection, you were every three years. We got a ding in 2020. Mm -hmm. That put us on an every year testing schedule. We tested three times. It was a minor ding, um, but we got three clears after that. So we went back on to a three-year schedule, which is now not the schedule anymore. That's all changing. Okay. <clears throat> that minor ding that we got in 2020, PFAS is everywhere. Right. And it is, it, when you do the testing for PFAS, if you are not wearing the right color kind of gloves, the, the right containers, if you happen to lay a container down, it can get contaminated with PFAS when you're taking your sample. So we paid somebody to do the sampling. I'm not saying that it was that minor ding came from an improper sampling, but since then we haven't had any okay. problems. Thank you. And we're not required to measure to go to the bottom of the page and then we'll yep. shut up. We're not required to check lead and copper more often than once well we did it four years ago three years ago yeah we're we're on the schedule for actually it'll be this year okay <clears throat> um a matter of fact i was just today was talking with brad um we have from september to uh, um we have from june 1st till september 30th and we have 10 lead and copper samples and those are specific places that we have to take them they're actually I think three of them or four of them are actual homes that we're required to take them in. But we have no distribution lines that are still lead, right? To, to our knowledge, no. Okay, so the lead that we're detecting, this is this backflow from houses? To... It It is present. I mean, it, they, they okay. just want us to keep testing for it. Well, sure. Um, as far as the records, we're well within the the allowed numbers okay thank you okay any other questions basically we are following all of the testing requirements that the state sets forward absolutely to a t actually i'm pardon me morgan i have one last question i've never seen you without a hat what, what's going on <laughs> i just realized why you look different there's no cap no nope. stunned by to how it? handsome you are <laughs> <laughs> I have one related question. Sure. If I remember going back like 25, 30 years, there were some issues with the pH level of the water that was tending to degrade people's pipes. Mm -hmm. An example, the copper pipes in my house, when we moved in, you could take a pair of pliers and just crush them. Most of the copper had degraded out of mm -hmm. them. So the pH in our water is monitored, and part of that is on our state report. Every, if you look at the numbers that we give you every month, there is a pH listed mm -hmm. on there. It is in between the guidelines that the state recommends for us. Um, I don't know if it's required to be on this or not. I don't think so. And that was part of my story because I didn't see it here. I'm like, well, yeah. there's more to the story. Then um, so pages, our, right? our pH is, is required to be between a seven and a seven five. And we use, and I'll give Kendall credit that he came up with the way of doing it without adding another chemical to our water. Um, usually to raise the pH, our water, when it comes out of the ground is like a six, three, which is highly acidic. Um, and all we do is run the water through a fine bubble aeration. And just that simple bubbling will raise the pH to within the numbers that we have. Interesting. Huh. 
Brilliant. Yeah. And he worked that out with the state. And I think we are the only municipality using fine bubble filtration in the state to raise their pH and not a chemical. It basically, we'd be adding soda caustics to it to raise it up. <clears throat> and we don't have to. Sodium hydroxide just to get there. If you go back to the old uh your chemistry days when you did ph's and you had the color changing dye in mm -hmm. and if you take a uh a, a straw and you put it in you could bubble it and it would actually change the ph mm -hmm. and you could watch the color change that's where kendall got the idea mm -hmm. see the kids thinking. chemistry class is yeah. valuable pay off it pays Perfect. off in the future i'm going to tell Definitely my son that story yeah, yeah. He, no, he complains I mean, about what am i ever going to use this that, that is basically um and then you know kendall pursued it with ray solomon from the state hmm. um and um they got it set up and it, and uh, it works and it's it's basically just a blower really mm -hmm. fine bubbles and we run the water out of the well <clears> through that and then we add the chlorine and the fluoride after and uh, that's our treatment plant right there in a nutshell kudos to kendall yeah good okay any other questions thank you steve um next up review of applicants for water and sewer commission <laughs> mr chairman i move to recommend to the select board that morgan wollover and aaron Farr be appointed to the water and sewer commission i will second that most Okay, discussion. And I will add that because David's not here, normally candidates tend to abstain, but two votes is not enough to pass it. So one of you will have to vote aye. I was just wondering that if we had to do it like I vote for him, he votes. Could you do it that here. way? We could. We could. I could separate the motion if Bart is okay with that. Okay, I'll withdraw the motion, and I move to recommend to the select board that Morgan Wallover be appointed to the Water and Sewer Commission. Is Bart? I'll second that. Discussion. Discussion calling for a vote. Say aye. Bart aye. Aaron aye. Mr. Chairman, I move to recommend to the select board that Aaron Farr be appointed to the Water and Sewer Commission. Ms. Bart, I'll second that. Any discussion? No discussion. Calling for a vote. Say aye. Bart aye. Morgan aye. Motion passes. And you want to formally abstain? Oh. You want to be recorded as a. Oh, abstain. I abstain. Okay. Sorry. Okay. See, you can work around a lot of things. <laughs> okay. Thank you sure you, you want me? <laughs> Next up. So you guys did both motions? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Sorry. Yeah. I'm sorry. We did the first. Uh, no, you're good. I was looking at other stuff and yeah. And you I, got it. You're I good. should have uh, said that I abstained I'm from sure the vote on me. I'm sure Duncan got it, so we're good. You all right? Thank you, Duncan. Uh next up. ARPA funds, which I have to confess, I'm pretty confused about this. We all are at this point. <laughs> okay. So this was a question that Aaron brought up at the last meeting about where are we at with ARPA funds? And we've been talking a bit about it at the select board level um, because the rule of ARPA funds is you have to have all of your money committed, which means under contract or fully spent by the end of this year. So December 31st of 2024. Um, the select board prior to the Bridge Street project kind of falling through had committed all but about $74,000 of the money. However, that was not under contract. So we were already, I was already getting a little bit nervous about, are we really going to be under contract for some of these projects between the parks and the sidewalks with construction? So I started researching with VLCT. They said that we are not alone in that conundrum that is the municipality lots of places may not have all their money spent or under contract into this year but because we claimed it as lost revenue because we had less than 10 million dollars the federal law allowed a municipality to claim anything under 10 million dollars as lost revenue the total amount that richmond received was about 1.2 million dollars so the town at the time which was like three years ago claimed it all as lost revenue so because we did that it actually sort of opens up what you can use the money on. You don't have to use it on a specific project. You can use it for funding government services. So funding government services, you can classify payroll and payroll related expenses as those services. So one way to extend, essentially extend the life of the money is to transfer any unused money from ARPA into the general fund to say, okay, it's paying off payroll and related expenses like benefits and whatnot. And then have the, and the select board can do that. 
And then that satisfies ARPA. They say, great, you've used your money, check that box, Federal Reserve is happy with you, Treasury is happy with Richmond. Then the select board, knowing that they probably still want to use that for selected projects because they've had stuff regulated for transportation. In the spirit of ARPA. Yeah, in the spirit of ARPA, um, <laughs> could go to the voters to create a special project reserve fund, which would be for projects that are similar to what you would do with ARPA, get that voted on by the voters, and then have a separate article to transfer an amount that's basically the same into that reserve fund. So then it's a voter created reserve fund funded with funds that are essentially a surplus at that point of the government's spending. And then that money can be in a reserve fund and it extends the life beyond December 31st because now we've met treasury by transferring the money and now the money's in a reserve fund that can be used for years to come. So if it takes us a while to decide exactly what these projects are or get them under contract, we're okay there. Um, included in the packet, uh, we have some updated numbers. The select board has made motions in about $830,000 of this money, leaving um, about $401,000 to still be placed under contract. And that's after I removed the sidewalks. Because at the last meeting, sort of seemed like the sidewalk project was mostly dead. Um, so that kind of brings us back up to $400,000 that needs to kind of be reallocated. And at this time, that is likely to be spent on recreation. I would imagine, yeah. <clears throat> so does that help explain sort of where yeah. we're at? Well, yes, and I hadn't really been watching the ARPA conversations. And I knew that when we first were talking about ARPA money, like when you guys sent the survey from the ARPA committee or whatever, mm -hmm. that it had to be spent. And I knew that there was some- The magic date for spending was 2026. If we didn't exercise the right to call it revenue. Loss. Revenue. <laughs> And the ironic thing is that we didn't actually lose revenue. Our tax, taxes went up during COVID. Yeah. Well, and we could still call it that. Yeah. yeah. And I guess, and I was just wondering, because I remembered at one point in the surveying process, there was some water and sewer type infrastructure things that it could be. Mm -hmm. And then I saw when I was reading the select board agenda a couple of weeks ago that it was talking about going into a CD. And I was confused because uh, I was like, how did we get to the CD? And is it something that? we could use to try to use it up. So and, the, but now this makes perfect sense. Well, the CD though, just to answer that question, that's something that the board started doing a little over a year ago, recognizing that between money that's sitting in reserve funds and then money that's surplus and this 1.2 million in ARPA that we largely haven't spent, there's a lot of funds in, in the bank not earning right, full potential. So they started doing, a, I think it was last winter into spring, every two months, we did a $500,000 CD until we got to three of those. And then we kept rolling those over. And now that's been increased to a million dollars. And the board tonight might look at 1.25 million um, for a three month. And I want to say every time we do a CD, it's 20 plus thousand dollars in interest so yeah, it's, we're getting it's real money yeah because it's, it's well, the cd rates are like one thing that actually is good it's right now four to five percent yeah. is what it's been over the last year so if you if you're bored enough to look at our town budget under uh, the revenues we're way exceeding the projected because the rates have been so good the returns have been so good and then that in turn goes back into what the board could use for tax offsets and then for the fy25 budget and actually for the water and sewer budget we looked at two weeks ago we increased that interest rate as well, knowing that, okay, there's more money coming in and interest just from the bank plus the CDs. So that also helps offset the future tax rate. And and Jim and Connie do keep an eye on the CD rate so that mm -hmm. we're not we're not bound to go to any one bank just because we've got other CDs there. Yeah, that's good. Erin, it seems this is part, it seems you're also sort of at least glancing at the question of should or could ARPA funds have been used for water sewer infrastructure? Because here we are at the Water Sewer Commission meeting. <laughs> and I know that came up early on, Jay. I don't know how you might characterize that discussion. As I can pretty simply. Um, we wanted the money to benefit the whole town and not the members of the Water and Sewer District. Yep. That's fair. Many towns did, but in the, I think from what I was able to see from VLCT, the towns that use the money for the water and sewer district, the water and sewer district was in most cases kind of some- oh, More it, widespread. It was more widespread. It basically was the towns so that would make more sense there. Yeah. Okay. Uh, okay. 
So the bottom line is ARPA money will not go to the water and sewer project. Well, and I was just on, afraid it was like a move it or lose yeah, it thing. Yeah. And I was like, well, well if we you're going to lose it, it like, here, yeah. I'm old. Yeah. Good, thinking. Good point. But it's, a, it's something to think about as we move forward and try to create that reserve fund. Do you want to keep an allowance in there for water and sewer projects at the discretion of the select board? Something to be considered. Okay. Yeah, can we have your interest? <laughs> it's free money anyway, right? <laughs> Is there such a thing? You can make a case for spending it on the water and sewer district because of the possibility of recruiting commercial businesses or, or even residential to grow the tax base. Yeah. I mean, it's not an empty argument. Yeah, it's true. Okay. Yeah, no uh, affordable housing in the Yep. And I think some towns have done that. I think Johnson is an example where they invested money in the water sewer system that does not serve the whole town, but it drives economics. And Morrisville, the same thing. It's yeah, like everybody in Morrisville is on it, but they have thought, seen it as an investment for downtown infrastructure, including businesses. And yeah, Morrisville put cases, a lot of affordable work. housing. Yeah, they put a lot of effort into what they call workforce housing. You know, we have to have a place for our employees to live. Right. And they took a very progressive attitude about that. But I, and they also had more developable land than we do. We don't have the plant land that Morrisville has. Right, yeah, we're pretty limited here, unfortunately. So, okay, okay, thank you. Um, update on influent pump purchase process. So, so, been very involved in that. No, so this is more about subsidy and what we can get back. So right. I don't know that they've made a lot of progress on the designs just yet for it. But one of the questions that had been, can we get a CWSRF subsidy on, on that? Because knowing it would have been wrapped into the larger 20-year study and there was some subsidy available for that. Um, so Hoyle Tanner looked into it, but basically we kind of can't jump ahead in the process and get this at a carve out and then have them consider the full project later. They would need to have step three engineering completed, which we're not gonna really do for this one standoff project. Um, so it would delay it significantly, it would have to get wrapped up into the bigger project. And the way I understand it, there's even a cap on sort of the maximum subsidies you can get. And we'll probably hit that with the full project anyway. So it doesn't sound like there would have been a lot more by including this pump there. So Hoyle Tanner is moving forward with kind of finalizing or getting to design so we can go out to bid to purchase the pump, um, trying to keep it moving as fast as we can, even though fast sometimes feels like it's not lightning pace, but fast for this type of a purchase. And this is money, I'm sorry, this is Morgan, this is money through the Chipman uh, water sewer revolving fund? Or? Yeah, so it's, um, it's the clean water re revolving fund. So CWSRF, Clean Water State Revolving Fund. Right. So it's what we do when we do like water line expansion projects is DWSRF for, D for drinking water and CWSRF is anything for sewer. Um, so usually you get a zero interest loan. Sometimes there's extra money available for subsidy. So that's what we'll be going for for the 20, 20 year full evaluation. Right. We'll be getting that subsidy. Um, so we were hoping to tap into that for this one, but it doesn't seem like it's possible in the interest of getting a pump in so that Steve doesn't have to wake up in the middle of the night wonder if his pump is working. Um, we'll just keep moving forward with getting this done. We've talked about this before. This will be a pump that fits in with yes. the 20 year design. Yeah, exactly. Mm -hmm. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Thank you. I, uh, I'm, I'm not sure we said this just for context or of what's the estimated price range just for people who are listening. Even... Wasn't it, well, there was what, 150? Uh, we just looked at it at the annual meeting. <laughs> so that's probably a good ballpark. I mean, it's not a million dollars. It's not 50,000. I thought it was 50. Uh, let me go back. We got a sec. I think the scale is of interest to people. Yeah. yeah. Well, when Josh is um, looking up that, um, I took one of the old bar racks that mm -hmm. we had at the plant, um, got Giro's to retrofit it. So we now have a, basically a screen prevent, preventing any debris from getting to the one current pump that we have. Okay. <clears throat> so, 
Okay. Yeah. We talked about that last meeting. Yeah. Didn't we? So, yeah. And that's and, an aluminum bar rack, right? Huh? That's an aluminum bar rack. We yeah. 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 And uh, basically, <clears> we <throat> retrofitted it so it would fit in the channel that we currently have. Um, it fits in great. We scrape it off um, in the morning and then before we leave at night, um, we get less than a five gallon pail of debris off it, mostly non flushable wipes. Mm -hmm. um, but why you do know, people not, huh? It why says do on the package, not get that? uh, because it says flushable on the container, yeah, probably. But I, I don't think people really focus on that. I'll just yeah. share one story, personal story of mm -hmm. business is that we have a grinder pump on our property and somebody flushed their cleaning rags down the toilet. Yeah. And they were done with them? They didn't want to, I don't know, it smelled or something. Anyway. So I looked it up. Yeah, we were looking at 150 for the pump. I think that includes engineering, design, and installation. So is that something that we can like put in bills that says like Wipes are not we've, flushable. Yeah, we can add I mean, it. We, we've done it. Reminder. We have I mean, done it off just and on to, over the just years. Just to give you an idea, in New York City alone, oh, 14 tons a day of non flushable wipes are removed from the system. Okay, I have a stupid suggestion. <laughs> um, this is going to sound stupid, but it's really not meant to be. MMC TV will put on the air pretty much mm -hmm. anything that they can, we can give them. If we did a five minute clip on mm -hmm. how non flushable wipes are really, I just go over there with the camera, and yeah. film you pulling them out of the bar rack. Yeah. 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 Uh, we've tried, because we tried the inserts over yeah, the years. We we, yeah, we've put them in a few times over the years. At least we're keeping them from well, there's damaging. There's a lot of new customers. Maybe well, I mean, right now again. we have a pretty good, with the bar rack in place, but still, it, mm -hmm. it's going to catch them. Right. Mm -hmm. I mean, so I think, you know, maybe doing once a year makes yeah. sense. I will note this as somebody who my family owns, what was once my mother's house, and we rent to college students. And if you ask a question, what will college students put in the toilet? Oh, Basically everything. anything. <laughs> yep. <laughs> Things that you would hope they won't put in it, they mm -hmm. do put yeah. in it. Mm -hmm. So I'm, I'm going to, maybe I'll recommend we're going to do the 3P uh, campaign. There you go. E puke. Paper. Oh, oh. there's a new information. Should have known. I should, I should have known that. One. I mean, that's Four what piece. they are. Yeah. It doesn't. Yeah. All right. All right. Uh, I seen my husband to go to everyone's house and give them a lesson. <laughs> no, I, I mean, if we make that video, which I can take responsibility for, we can also share it on YouTube. Mm -hmm. I don't know how many people sit at home just watching MMC TV, but if we bookend it with like an MMC TV field hockey game. <laughs> Yeah, like Those, have it as a commercial. Yeah, for right. service yeah, announcement. Yeah. Nice. Um, M of the MMU athletics get more views yeah. almost anything we put on. I think they do. That's yeah. cool. Put it on TikTok <clears throat> as well. Okay. okay, so it's 150 for the pump while we yeah. Yep, 150 <laughs> is our estimate right now. And on to service line inventory. Interest on those CDs. <laughs> <laughs> All right, next up. I'm sorry, any more discussion? No. Okay, next up. Uh, not that's needed update on service line inventory um service line inventory is is pretty much completed um the one thing that we're um going to continue with is um when we start installing um meters we will physically be able to take photos while we're in there of the service lines coming in and we'll I'm going to be able to upload those to a website that the engineer has um, already set up. So all the documentation that will going forward will have um, photos with it um, and making the process um, easier for us in the future. Wow, it is. Um, also, we are going. They're going to make it so that we can add any illegal um connections to this like uh sub pumps um uh washer and dryer in the basement with no backflow preventer things like that um we can also upload onto that same database um going forward okay Aaron? how much does that cost 
to have yeah. access to that database or is that included with what we've done? That was all included. Yeah, I think, the, I think they were, they, yeah. it was part of their final product. So it's not like it. we are, they're not, it's not like no, a monthly they, payment. He we're said there make. was no way. No, I didn't, start. he didn't say anything, yeah. yeah. Yeah, we asked. I mean, you asked. Yeah, you're right. We did, yeah. He said no. Lord? I'm just thinking ahead to the infamous Tilden Avenue line replacement so when we get to that, I think it's worth a cross reference to who in the, the new service line area is due to upgrade their service line mm -hmm. and then notify them. And this was back to the idea of having, um, you know, time and materials or lower cost of the contractor to replace the private lines at the customer's cost while they're on site. Right. So not to jump ahead, but in I am hoping that going out in um, the water bills for July, there will be a call and sign up, get on the sign up to get your water meter replaced. Um, we are, I have all the water meters in stock right now. Yeah. I have all the infrastructure. Um, June 17th, they're coming up to start installing the infrastructure, the readers and stuff. Um, so I'm hoping that we're ready to start kicking this off and I want people to start signing up. Um, like I said, my priority is the failed meters that we have in the system. Mm -hmm. After the failed meters, it goes to the large users, which means anything like the schools, I don't want to wait until September to try to change a school meter. I prefer to do it in the summer. Um, and then anybody with a two inch meter would be, you know, the priority would be to get the bigger ones done first and work down to the homeowners. But if you are a homeowner and you call and you want to be number one, we'll put you there. And if so, Denise wanted to get Bridge Street here right top of the list. I'll sign up tonight. There you go. <laughs> Um, ready. <clears throat> so that was to jump forward a little bit on that, but okay. we could do that too, Aaron. That's a good idea. Right. Okay. Thank you, Aaron. Uh, any more discussions on um, service line inventory? No. All right. Moving along. Consideration of changing the rate for sale of water from the water <clears throat> resources department hydro. So th this was basically, we brought up the fact that we charge for water, we sell. Um, I mean, today I sold 270 gallons. Uh, ECI came down to get it. Um, and it's for like uh, one and a half cents per gallon, right? I think is how well, it Well, it's $15 a thousand. Um, anything under a thousand, I charge um, $5 a flat fee because most people are coming in with like 200 gallon tanks in their truck. And, um, you know, for 200, the way in the past it was always done was Kendall would figure out and you were making change for like 250, 225. I felt that a $5 flat fee for anything less than a thousand gallons was you know it averaged out that you know it would five dollars would was more than enough than for what we were making mm -hmm. um and it was less of a and nobody quarmed over it you get you go to the store and buy a gallon of water it right <laughs> you know a dollar. you're paying mm -hmm. you're paying five dollars for 200 um, so, so the typical uses, I mean, we joked last time about filling your swimming pool, but that doesn't sound like that happens for him. No, this the, is people who, whose wells have failed? And yes. Things? Okay. Yep. It's people whose wells have uh, issues. We have probably five people that come in trying to maintain their well throughout the summer. They basically are taking the water home, dumping it in the well, and just trying to keep the well filled so that it's not right. empty. Burn the <clears throat> huh? So it doesn't burn their pump. right, and yeah. and you know they don't. Their wife doesn't run out of water in the middle of a shower. <laughs> that, that is that is the number one reason most of the people come in. 
My wife ran out of water yesterday in the shower. <clears throat> but, you know, what I'm thinking is, what's our reference point for $15 per 1,000? So if I read the rates for the core customers, on top of the fixed rate, the metered rate for 1,000 gallons varies from about 11 to about $17 yeah, per 1,000. The 15 is pretty much right there in the middle. Yeah. I mean, you guys can set whatever you want. I'll charge. I mean, well, a, a lot of places it is 25. They just have a flat 25 per thousand. Well, my thesis is we should not be charging the intermittent user less than any of the standard users, mm -hmm. if anything, more. And that's where I'm going. So if the school is paying on top of its fixed rate, $17 for a thousand gallons. I think we should be charging these other customers more than that. And I feel like $20 isn't like a $5 jump is a lot on one sense, but for what they're doing, I don't think it is. Yeah. I mean, <clears throat> we do have bulk callers that come in and to tell you the truth, a, a 4,000 gallon tanker truck, they're not going to quorum over $5. Mm -hmm. Right. So that's my only benchmark. Yeah. You know, right. I think we should be charging more than we charge yeah. the and fixed. I do wonder, like, customers. if we called and said we need 3,000 gallons of water, how much would that cost if we called the hauling company? Uh, I don't you, know. Like, is that $500? I've, I've never Are we bought. selling it for $20, $15 a gallon? Yeah. They come and get it from you, and then they upcharge us? Yeah. Oh, I'm sure they thousand do. percent? I mean, they charge a delivery fee. <laughs> <clears throat> I will tell you that, ask uh, right a couple of winters ago when we had that uh, January freeze where uh, the power was out and everybody had frozen pipes and stuff for about a month, we supplied a trailer park in St. George with water because they could not produce enough to keep there. I mean, we were selling uh, a tanker two tankers a day for the most of the month of January. How big is a tanker? About 4,000 gallons. Same as the ship truck. It's usually so, a straight, straight body. So two comments. All right. Uh -huh. One is you, you know, we, have, we need to be empathetic towards people's needs, but two, I mean, the time that you or an employee spends getting them connected is more than 20 bucks or so. Well, and that's why I went to a straight $5 fee for 200 gallons right. or, you know, 750 gallons, because it wasn't worth my time or one of the employees time to sit there and figure it out and then try to find change, make sure, you know, it, it we just went to a flat fee. Nobody even said a word. None of the customers even you know, they're like, it's still better than trying to buy a gallon of water at the store. <laughs> and, and when you, you if you, if you're just trying to keep your well full and you come in once a week, you know, you're going to spend more, almost $5 in gas getting here. Than, so, so do we have an eyeball number, Bard? It's either 20 or 25. Or... Yeah. Why not 25? Right. So we need a motion. The only um, reason I say 25 is these customers are not paying the fixed rate that all the you're right. Right, pipe connected yeah, customers right. are paying. Okay, that's a very good yeah. point. I was sitting here frowning because I'm like, but if you factor in the fixed rate, I think yeah. it is fair. I'll make the motion, but I'm going to add to it. I move to set the rate for sale of water from the hydrant to $25 per 1,000 gallons and any amount under a thousand gallons is a ten dollar flat fee well I mean, that's risky okay so don't could, make them somebody motion. could do 990 gallons and and pay a lot less mm. okay so i'll take that part out I'm, i mean I, I i i think we will well in my opinion we will well i don't know if we would lose some i would know. say make it $25. most of the people that are coming in for the are people who have a well problem um, and, you know, I, I, well, I don't know. 
If you guys set what you, you can, want, so, I'll do okay, it. Well, we'll you do set a, you set a min minimum rate at ten dollars, so that way, if it's what would it be, two hundred and fifty gallons is ten bucks. We, at twenty five, whatever the number it works out to. Right? Yeah. So that way, in the nine ninety nine, they would right. get they would get well. Well, then, then I, mean, I, think the math, I think the math here is it could word it such that or any multiple of 100 gallons. So in other words, you'd pay two and a half dollars for 100 gallons or five bucks for 200 gallons. Air it's up to the 25. Kind of so that, hmm. that well, at least see what I'm saying has to proportionally. So not, yeah. Nobody can. I understand. Use abuse the system, but at the we same time, we had them for lunch today. Our daughter gave over. Thank you. Where's that? So I'll redo my motion. <laughs> I move to set the rate for the sale of water from the hydrant to $25 per 1,000 gallons. Right? With a minimum of $5. Or with, with uh, or I guess you should add anything under 1,000 should be. Uh, no, don't do it that way. Just say if somebody comes in and buys 1,000 gallons, $25, they buy 100 gallons. That's 250 So we should say just say minimum $5, like we've been doing. That would, I mean, that's just this. Oh, I see what you're saying. Minimum, right? No Instead matter what. Instead of trying to So, 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 if I'm, let, I'm just want to understand. So, if somebody comes in and gets 200 gallons, it's five dollars. If somebody comes in and gets 400 gallons, it's ten dollars. Right. Does that that's seem fine. fair to you? That's fair to me. Okay. So I'll second your motion. Okay. okay. <laughs> Any further discussion? Calling for a vote from the motion. The motion aye. aye. Bart, aye. Aaron, aye. Morgan, aye. Motion passes. David, aye. Oh, David. Oh, David. Oh, David. Hey, hey. hey. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> Sneak attack Thank there. You, David. Okay. Uh, next up, um, uh, superintendent's report. I'll make it quick. Okay. Um, we've had a lot of things going on. Um, I will tell you the plant's running really well. I will tell you that on Friday, we took 89,900 gallons of septage in one day. Wow. Um, so you had to pump the tanks empty multiple times in that day? Huh? You had to pump the tanks empty multiple times in that day? Um, basically, we started with everything empty. Mm -hmm. We uh, started the press as soon as they started pumping. And we just kept taking all day long. Um, we've had some issues with some different pieces of equipment, the headworks, um, grit screen, um, the blower um, crapped out when after we cleaned it out and got it working. Um, lo and behold, I was downstairs digging around for something else. There was a grit blower on the shelf. Was it new? It was a rebuilt one. Well, with something. Next best so thing. it worked fine. It's in place. Um, I have sent the old one out to get in a price on whether it can be rebuilt and what the price would be. If that is cost prohibitive, I've also asked to find out how much a new one would be. Um, but my other question to the salesperson was, what time frame does it how long will it take me to get a new one because i don't want to buy a 2500 piece of equipment right now have it sitting on the shelf and then in two years it's still sitting on the shelf when we put in a completely different system right if if it's a week time frame then i think we can just let them have it on their shelf and we'll order it, um, but that's my opinion. I, I, Makes sense. Going forward, I want to make some educated decisions that way. I don't want to. I don't want to stand up with stuff on the shelf that is, you know, big items that we don't need. Right. Okay. Well, I have sort of a follow up question. You know, I have this image of like going through grandpa's attic. Oh, look what I found. <laughs> Where are we with sort of inventory of parts? You know, you've, you've had a few stories of like, you open up the box, we, this thing doesn't work, this one does. Yeah, we, 
everything that we bring in now and have inventoried, when it goes on the shelf, it's dated and there's initials that have to go on it. So if I put something on the shelf, I initial it when it came in and, and what it was for. Um, and that's kind of what we're doing going forward. Um, as far as an official inventory, I don't really have one yet. It seems like that might no, be a task just to it, clean it, out it does. the stuff that doesn't work. This is junk. Get rid of it. Yeah. Well, well 20 years over, we might consider barcoding parts so we can actually have a. Oh, yeah. 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 No, no. We were looking right. into that system with that one vendor. They had a whole. You, yeah. Like yep. A year ago. Yeah. So. There's a. There is a. A vendor out there that would actually you, they come in they barcode the not only the machine oh, yeah. set it up and then they'll barcode all of the inventory that goes with that machine and you can do so, maintenance records and it's a that really makes nice system. System. yeah it is a very nice system. um we had so we had the air compressor go for the uh, dewatering press um when I we got the one off the shelf that said used or new for the it was a used one. Um, Mike was able to put the two together and make a compressor that would work for us. So we didn't have to lay any money out there. Um, and that's going forward. I mean, it's pretty much the way we're gonna do it until we get going with the upgrades. Because I, I don't want to be laying out large amounts of cash just to have something on the shelf. No, it's a good point. Um, you, you know the estimated time to failure of a given part. Yeah. Well, I mean, in print. Imminently. Not, no, you no, have a ballpark. Yes, yes. Yeah. Um, the, so right now, we're, the plant is running really well. It's recovered from everything that happened to it. Um, like I said, we took a, almost 100,000 gallons of septage in. One thing I would like to say is, <clears throat> and I'm going to throw this little bomb out there, um, going to the conference, the Green Mountain Conference uh, at Killington, um, there was a discussion there that I took part in um, that the state put on. <clears throat> They value Richmond's dewatering of septage very highly. One of the things, <laughs> one of the things they suggested there, which kind of angered me to no end, was they would like what they would like to see happen in Richmond is they would like to see an independent company with its own dewatering plant, not on Esplanade Street, but near the interstate, where it's more centrally located. And not on the floodplain. And, and not on the floodplain. So this angered me in two ways, because a dewatering, they thought that we already had septage lines out to the interstate. Mm -hmm which we do not. <laughs> this got me thinking, though. And I'm, I'm just throwing this out there that I think we really need to think about not allowing another company to come in and take the septage receipts and go that route. That we might need to think about taking dewatering off of Espinade and putting it somewhere else and keeping control of the septic receipts. Mm -hmm. it, it is a bomb out there, but I think it's a worthy bomb to start to think about. Let's, let's take next this up. meeting agenda. I yeah, feel like that's, meeting, it sounds like something we really agenda. should discuss. I, so. I think we really need to discuss it. Yeah, so yeah. we got... Limited time here. The future yeah. agenda item. Future yeah. agenda item. So thank you, Steve. Last thing. To... Um, I just had one quick question. 10 second update on how Brad's doing. He was in the plant today. He he worked for about four hours. Um, he's doing all the computer work that I can give, give him. him. Um, he his leg is still 
really large. He was in last week. You saw him. I mean, he about four hours, and he is wiped out. Um, one other, well, you don't even know this, but <clears throat> we have a candidate that has applied that um, I contacted today. He's coming down to take a tour next Friday. Um, he is very, very interested in the water and wastewater. It is Ben. Um, You're emailing? No. Oh, the one who talked to you separately? No. Oh, the other one. The third one. Um, oh, okay. Yeah. I think I he, he has already toured Waterberry's plant. Okay. He has already talked to Paula about getting in the apprenticeship program. Excellent. Um, he comes from a total different background, though. Um, he is in public relations. But he's young and he's very smart and he's very willing. So I've got him coming down to take a tour and we'll go from there. Thank you, Steve. Um, last thing, I don't know if you want to say anything about the tank. Or yeah, I'll give a real quick update. Uh, and I think at the next meeting, we'll have Tyler in to review some video. So oh, we can yeah. talk cool. about it more at that time. But I met with... Um, Met with our attorneys and also a couple of people from VLCT. Uh, we agreed to ask Tyler who he thought would be a tank specialist to do an independent review. He recommended Aldrich and Elliot, and um, our attorneys reaching out to them to kind of get a scope of work and sort of an idea of how much they would charge to go through and do a review so that we get an independent third party specialist to look at the tank and kind of come back with a report of what do they think is the cause of the cracking? How severe is it? And where should we go from there? So we'll have more as soon as we hear back. Great. Thank you, Josh. Great. I have for next agenda. I think we've already got several. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Other things, I don't know. At some point, I guess we should circle back around to the gateway, but um, mm. at some point. Well, in an effort of time, I will make motion. the motion. To I think gateway, before yeah. you do that, the gateway should come back and also... There was some email communication with regional planning about the grant and what Northern the status of the yeah. So I think that's maybe an agenda mm -hmm. for next time. Good. All right, motion. I move to adjourn the water and sewer commission meeting. It's Bart. I'll second it. Right. Uh, calling for a vote to adjourn. J I. Bart A. Aaron I. Morgan I. David I. Meeting adjourned. Thank you, everybody.